can never do it like I When you see man pull up and slide Man stepped in a room with legends, Rio and Steve You know it's a vibe Check the podcast, what you wanna know? Don't ask me, go and ask Joe If you're talking Premier League, he's on the front line and I gotta go oh. It's a vibe with five, vibe with five, and you already know what it is. It's a vibe with five, vibe with five, and you already know what it is. Vibe, vibe with five, vibe with five, and you already know what it is. It's a vibe with five, vibe with five, and you already know this. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this week's episode of Vibe with Five. You got here myself, Joel Bayer, still top of the league, by the way. Before you start giving me that look, Stephen Housen, and our special guest for the day. Mr. Ashley Williams, how you doing, bro? You good? Good, thanks, bro. You? Yeah, I'm great, man. Wait, we still got Rio joining us in the background here. Some swanky background. You good, Rio? Yeah, I'm right, man. This is just a... I woke up, like, back in the nightclub, innit? So I went out last night. I woke up here, so I thought I'd do it straight direct. <laughs> oh, man. Well, thanks for joining us today, man. Despite Ashley being on, you still said, you know what? Let me make sure that I'm on the show. Steve, you want to kick, kick us off with uh, the first game that we're reviewing? All right, I, really, I wanted to talk to you about Arsenal while Rio was on, but all right, we can talk about United. Yeah, let's talk about United, bro. Rio went back to your old stomping ground, Ellen Road. Bored mm. the piss out of everyone for 70 minutes before we got our act together. And uh, yeah. w- what's going on with Marcus Rashford? How is he in this sort of form at a minute? He's got it's 29 like, uh, goals We said this last week. Games. Every time we come on, we talk about Marcus. That's the form he's in. That's the type of form this guy's in where he's just absolutely affecting games at the knife, end, knife edge of the game. He, he's the cutting edge of the team. He's the most informed striker on the planet right now and he's up for a new contract. The timing could not be any better for Mr. Marcus Rashford. Unreal. Yeah, so we, we had him um, coming in, doing a, doing an absolute madness, as always. I find this well weird, you know. This is proper weird chatting to him like this over here. I don't know how you lot do it. Um, we had Garnacho coming and scoring as well. That's now mm. 12 games, 10 goals, four assists for Marcus, just in 2023. So the, the, the wider form that he's got over the course of the season, but it's been like red hot, and it, since he returned back from the World Cup. Is uh, Gareth Southgate had to do a full front page newspaper apology yet, or is he still sort of pretending <laughs> that it was the right decision at the World Cup? No, I mean, I was interested in the comments from Ten Hag at the weekend. That he, he always immediately saw the potential that he had, and there's more to come. He wants to get more out of him, and that's what I like. I think that's like, that's mouthwatering for Marcus Rashford. Can he maintain this form through the rest part of the season? We spoke about it last week. This is now the business end of the season. There's trophies being handed out. The, the, the Champions League spots um, are there for the taking. Can he can he drive us towards that with his goals and his performances? And what I like about him, listen, you want him to be playing well and, and performing perfectly through a game, but he can go quiet and have quiet moments in the game, but then come up with the goods and get a goal. And that's what elite players do. I think Mo Salah has been brilliant at that in the Premier League over the last few years. And, and someone like, I think, Rashford has been searching for that to be the man, the goal-getter, the person that the team relies upon. That's where he's sitting now. When Man United looking to get a goal or change a game at any minute, and they look at Marcus Rashford, they look nowhere else but him. So that responsibility is on his shoulders. He's maturing nicely. And like, like the manager, Tony Hag, said, I think there's still more to come. I think a pleasing thing is that, listen, we, we had our two first-choice centre-halves, didn't play the game. We still keep a clean sheet. That's, that's the, as much of a big, massive shout for me as Marcus scoring the goals. Harry Maguire comes in, Shaw plays left side centre-half alongside him, and we still manage to keep a clean sheet. I mean, it's, in terms of confidence building through not just your first 11, but the whole squad, the, uh, Man United seems to be getting into a really, really good place, as I said, when it's the real business end of the season. Now, I, I've seen the same comment as well, and I was, it was interesting that Ten Hag said that he was excited to work with him and that he, he, there's more to come. But watching him yesterday, uh, what, what else do you think, Rio, that, that, that he can bring to the table? Rashford, like, what more can he do than he's doing at the minute? Like, with his game, with, you know, he, in terms of his game? I, yeah, I, I think there's more of a dominance throughout the 90 minutes that he can bring where he's... He's bringing other people into the game even more because you know he's got the pass and we saw that last season. When he was out of form, there were still elements where you see him, wow, he can produce a pass out of nothing and put people in on goal if there's runners. I think if he, once he starts getting that synergy with a couple of other players in the team, he'll be even be able to pick out players more. I think, he, I think he can take over a game. I think he's got that. We've seen him do that at, at points this season. But if he can do that more consistently, I think then you, you, you're getting into the realms of like world-class football player. Um, 
And I don't think he's even that fast in, t in terms of form right now. He's right up there. But if you can add those parts to his game where even things like ball retention, we watched Messi in the World Cup, Ash. His ball retention is ridiculous. The amount of times the ball comes into him at crazy angles, at crazy pace, and he simplifies it and makes it look so easy, difficult situations. There's bit parts like that where Marcus can add to his game as well. But I think just keep on, keeping on the other part, sorry, if I'm a defender, there's sometimes I look at Marcus and I think he, he makes it easy for defenders sometimes in the game. Where I, if, he, if he offered the threat in behind a bit more, then I think he even gets more joy to feet and becomes that threat in behind still. And I think that part of his game there, decision-making on whether to run long or come short, I think would be great. If he gets that, he becomes an even more of a, a horrible player to play against. Ash, what do you reckon he needs to add to his game then? You say you, Ten Hag's talking about the extras. What do you think he needs to add? Or no, can he add? Well, just real, just nailed it there. I just think that... <clears throat> I think we're seeing him believe a little bit more. Like yesterday, every... every it seems he seems to be more effective with the ball in behind, which as a defender is disgusting to deal with because it's bouncing. You got to run back towards your goal, and he's breathing down your shoulder. But every time he, he gets it now, he, he looks like he's a, he's alive. He wants a goal. He's so hungry. You can see it when you see a striker like that. They're desperate for goals. The different every action is like making something happen every time. So the only thing that's why I asked Rio. So I was like, well, what else can he do? But maybe you're right. Like bring that to the party more and be a little bit more. Um, you know, overall demanding of the rest of the players around and bring other players into the game, like Rio said. But the way he's playing at the minute, it, it, I, when I read the comment, I was like, wow, this, this guy's on form. He looks strong. He's fast. He's a beast. He looks fit. You see him run them channels, Rio. You know what it's like when, you, as a defender, he runs you in the channel, then you're knackered for five minutes. You're like, please don't go channel again. He, and when the camera cuts yeah. to him, he's not even breathing. He's not even blowing. So he's obviously really, yeah, you know, fit. He's strong. He looks like he wants it all the time. So I, that's why I was asking, because I was like, well, I'm not sure what more we could probably get from him at the minute. Ash, uh, a week ago, I would have said, if you'd have asked me that question a week ago, I'd have said, you know what? He don't get enough headers. He's got two <laughs> in his last two games. Like, he's, he's even adding that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you can see that he's working. He must be working on his game behind the scenes. And that's what I, I love. I mean, I was with Modric. We've got a little piece coming out of Modric uh, so next week um, on the channel, guys. And one of the main things he spoke about was always adding to your game and learning and not being content with what you achieve and like this game this guy's at a different level in terms of achievements but for someone like him talking like that these younger players man the inspiration they can take from from those type of words phenomenal Ben and McCarthy needs some love I think for the work he's doing behind the scenes yeah he must be uh, Rio, Joel Bear here reporting for five. Joel, wait, 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 Joel Bear reporting for five here, Rio. Um, Joel, Joel, where, Joel where, where's my laptop? Bro? Wait, 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 we're gonna, look. We're, I, we're going to the Apple Store I'm, after I'm, this. I'm, I'm pulling, out of this, yet, I'm, I'm pulling out of this laptop deal, bro. You're not even in the studio. Are you asking for laptop? You're not even here. No, I want my laptop slapped on that table. <laughs> why, do you, why do you keep putting your... Have you noticed in the comments they kept saying, when a man asks for a laptop and he's using his hands, you know it's a problem. <laughs> yes, the hands yeah. are there, but the, gun, the guns are out. Look, look, look. The Look, Joel Bear reporting for five here. I could ask you about Marcus Rashford and how many goals he's going to score and Garnacho. I know where this is going. Let's get straight to it. I know where this is going. Do Manchester United think they're still in a title race, yes or no? No, I'm not talking title race. I'm talking Champions League qualification. That's all I want and maybe a trophy elsewhere. But Champions League, I'll be very happy and content with that. Anything else is a bonus. How are you guys doing, by the way? Because you guys are stuttering. <laughs> You've got issues right now. You guys need a also, real, real, real uh, team talk. You just said, Arsenal. did Man United still think they're in a title race? We never was in the title no, race. No, you were for like one week. When never. you beat City, maybe not you, when you beat City, everyone was going mad. We needed and to beat Palace it. and you lot. No, we no, no, no. So we exactly, were. yeah, because Casemiro was ill-disciplined, as usual. Anyway, um, going back to the game. Oh, by the way, you know, it's yeah. five. We're going to be at Barcelona versus United. Uh, make sure you yes, look out for that. That's going to be a big one. We're covering that one. Yeah. Um, so but why are you moving on from Arsenal? Because you normally want to bring it back there. But for some reason, uh, the last couple of times you've been on, you don't want to bring it back there. You lot are shaking like a dog doing a poo in a cold night. <laughs> It's unbelievable. I can't you know, believe since, yeah. since Joel did his little, I just want to talk to our Manchester United, that guy called out well, Harry Pinero, me, the you. <laughs> like, since he listed all the United fans that he's heard of, right? You lot haven't won a game, Joel. Yeah, it's only three games. It's three games. Everyone's excited. Oh, do you know This is how I know you guys were Joel. fearing us. You fear us. Joel. Look, look, Rio. This let's see his Joel. voice crack. Let's, Joel, let's, this is when it, you it fear starts. Us. Let's take you know, it. That, that, that's, the, that's the sign you make. 
It's getting tight. You guys are twitching, yeah. is, is well. twitching right Do now. you think All you're still in a title race? Do I still think we're in a title race? What kind of a silly question is that? Well, elephant in a tree, my friend. Can I just add this in there as not Go being on. an Arsenal or Man United fan? I know I like both the teams this year, yeah, but as someone that don't sort of think the rest of us have just been sitting patiently waiting for Arsenal to do <laughs> Arsenal things and that's exactly <laughs> what they're doing right now. So it's yes, kind of like we knew this was coming. So we'll see. Ash, Rio, you got you guys have played the game to a certain level. Um it's <laughs> fair to <laughs> say <laughs> it's fair to Rio, say Rio, he's so in there today, you know. It's fair to say, it's fair to say <laughs> that these kind of things happen in a season, right? Don't mean we're out of it. It's just a little hump on the road. Yes, we would have wanted to maximise points in the last two games and it hasn't happened. But we've got a big game on Wednesday. Five will be there again, of course. Um, but yeah, like it's four months to go. Do you know what, Joel? Joel, I'm just really interested to see how you guys react. Listen, you guys have been absolutely like faultless. You've been great, I have to say. And as much as the laugh we have on this, on this uh, show, yeah, I have to respect what Arteta and his team have done over this course of this season. But this is the moment that we've all been waiting for. That inevitably does happen. It happens to City, it happens to Liverpool, it happens to my teams when I play, etc. There comes a point in the season where it doesn't go to plan and the bumps are in the road. And we've said they're going to happen. It's now how you guys react. That's the bit I want to see. Do you guys react in a positive manner and shake it off? Or does this, does this, this hangover continue? And do you guys like the... the the Panadol, the paracetamol, the Nurofen just ain't having any effect. You're just sitting there with a hangover constantly at the moment. Now, you've got three games, you've had it. Will it continue? And I want to see how you guys, what are you made of now? It's all right. You know what? Actually, you know, you know these things. When it's going well, it's easy to go out there and perform. You'd have to think about it but some when, time. Yeah, but when you have a but little, then, when you have a shake like this, it feels like the world's just coming tighter and tighter. Like <laughs> it's what it feels like. Everyone's talking about you. It's horrible. You don't want to. You don't really want it. You know what I mean? And then it, it's just how many big characters are in that dressing room. Seriously, <laughs> so how many big characters can come and put their chest out now and say, "I'll take that. I'll take that on the chin and watch what I do." All right. So give us an example to both of you. Real. We'll go with you first. Give us an example of when it all started getting a little bit smaller. Everyone started talking about you, you know, a little run in your season. It doesn't have to be a title win itself, but a particular, a pinnacle point in the season that you can remember. No, I just remember times. I just, there's a game, my first time I ever won the league was um, the first time in my year at United and we played Southampton away and we, we drew. I think we drew. Yeah, we drew one or two all. And I was in the change of like, almost in a depressive state, like, wow, we've thrown it away. And I just heard Roy Keane and I think Gary Neville saying that, well, that's a point game. And it's just perspective and how you look at it. And then my mindset changed slowly on the course of the journey home, actually. It's quite, yeah, quite positive. Bounce into Monday morning, then all of a sudden, the season, the outlook on the season looks very different. But if you haven't got them experienced voices guiding you through, it can quite quickly become a very, very kind of negative mindset within the group. Um, you just need the right people with the right voices making the right noises, man. So... I don't know, man. You, you, you guys. It's even you, Joel. You, your energy is wrong. If that, if that transmits to the team, you lot are playing trouble. Because you don't even, you don't even chat in the WhatsApp group no more. You've been the most vocal man this season, but I ain't seen you chatting with any energy lately. Let's put up a your, picture of uh, my conversations in the WhatsApp group, please. Can we insert? Thank you. But is it a point game though? Before I ask, go on to Ash, is it a point game for Arsenal? Yes or no? Yeah, Brentford, it must be in it. Brentford, the biggest team in your area, mate. So, absolutely. but they beat you, didn't they? Yeah, yeah right, exactly. cool. It, um, it depends how you look at it. It all depends on how you look at it. It's a point game only if the way that you 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 position it within that change room, the way that over the next couple of days after that result, the way that Mikel Arteta and his coaching staff and some experienced players in that dressing room, the Zinchenko's, Jesus, who have won the league, the way they position it for the coming couple of days is very important, it's vital. Because if they're depressed and they're negative and they're low, it feeds through to the team and the performances, you're going to see it in the performances coming up. Ash, give us an example, man. Uh, like of what we're talking about, a, a, a smaller example. But yeah. So yeah. like Gen in the Euros Brazil. 2016, exactly what Rio's saying, second, got three group games, second one we lose to England, 98th minute, what a sucker punch that is. Everyone's on the floor in our dressing room, like, We've won one. We got. We would. We was in the lead. We thought we was going to win it. Then we thought we was going to draw. Ninety-seven eighth minute storage scores. Oh, yeah, we that lose. So yeah. that one hurts. Yeah. And then exactly like what Rio said. I'm an emotional player. So I'm. I've. Do you know what I mean? If I'm happy, I'm happy. If I'm angry, I'm angry. And if I'm sad, I'm sad. So even I'm down. I'm like, well, you know, would we let one slip there? And it was Gaz Bale who looked at it at a complete other way and said, he just said in the dressing room, would we have took this like three weeks ago? 
one win and one loss. And we was all like, yeah, yeah, yeah we would have, yeah. All right, so we got to beat Russia to, to go through. Do we think we can beat Russia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then literally, the whole place just changed like that. And we, would, we was ready, you know, like it lifted that dark cloud off us before we even left the stadium. So like in a smaller, you know, like not over the course of a season, but it's like what we were saying, who in that dressing room? And I'm looking at Arta and you've got to hope that it's someone like him and Xhaka and the players Rio mentioned from City who know what it takes to try change the narrative a, a little bit and make people see, because you, you would have took this at the start of the season. That's fine. But don't you think, Ash, yeah, that, you know, your perspective and your goals change? I don't want that to be an excuse because there's some people that use that as an excuse. Stop smiling, bro. Like, in, in terms of what, like, like, in, like general, we I'm, we I'm need to be happy. Nah, all right. <laughs> we we need we need to we need to be realistic. At the start of the season, of course, Arsenal would have taken top four. Uh. Would have beat your hand for it. We finished in lower positions. As Steve mm-hmm. keeps reminding me every week. But the reality is, we're now in this position. Doesn't mean that because everyone's praised us and we've been doing well when we beat United and we beat Liverpool. Yep, 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 and, yep, you know, it, yeah. like, you know, we need to we need to now have our our championship winning. Hats on here. You that's what's got required. You haven't won it in 19 years. You haven't got a hat. That's what's required. You're, but that's what's required, though. Yeah, but no, I get that. But I think the other point is, is to put it into some sort of perspective because it gets so... Everyone talk... Everyone now, everyone's saying Arsenal crumbled, 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 crumbled. No, but no, it takes, you guys have no, been saying Arsenal Everybody crumbled. apart from you lot are saying you're crumbling, yeah? But someone in someone in the building has got to put it into perspective. And you would have took... The, all them players and Arteta would have took this at the start of the season. So, OK, regroup quick because you've got a big game coming. Regroup and then do what you've been doing for, for the I most agree. part. I agree, I agree. I think that the... the the slow worry. Joe, go on. Joe, just before you answer, yeah, I've got to shoot, guys, yeah? I've got to go, I've got to catch a, catch a plane, right? But I had to come on and just see this and just feel the vibe and energy that you've got. I really genuinely hope that your team don't have the negative energy that you are transmitting on the show tonight. What do you mean negative? Today, guys. This ain't guys, negative. I've got to go. Yeah, you're negative. You're negative, bro. You ain't got the same energy. The cigar's not out. The, sh- the shades aren't there. You ain't got, you ain't got the <laughs> we, we ain't seen cake in weeks. Man. It's just different, man. So... Guys, I'm going to have to love you and leave you. Ash, thanks for coming on, man. Hey, in fact, that's Rio. Man. He was actually in Spain because he went to get Modric online for us. So he sacrificed being here for Modric. So we appreciate that. And now we're back to resume with our regular service. I just want to say, what the heck are you doing, bro? <laughs> Don't you worry about me. You're all right. Yeah, Ash, you were saying? I thought this was like a professional show or something. That Why? We <laughs> what made you think that? <laughs> Are we talking about Arsenal yet? Because I'm ready. We were talking about Arsenal. I'm ready. Anyway, Ash, as you were saying, you can take them off now, by the way, Steve. I'm going to keep them on so it rolls. No, I'm saying, I'm, I was asking you, like, I understand that what you're saying about Arsenal, you don't want them, it to be an excuse, but someone in there has got to have a little bit of perspective and not get caught up in what's happening outside the building. Do you know what I mean? And I, recollect and I, regroup. And regroup and focus on what you've been doing all season. Yeah, you can't, because, because 20 years you haven't won a title for you. No, know? but listen, you can't keep this, you can't keep it go. Someone needs to put a stop to it and I, understand that where you are. Where would you rather be? The hunter or the hunted? Ash, I'm not going to do this with you at the moment. What I'm saying what, is this. What do you mean? No, 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 because no, what, what, I'm, what I'm saying... I'm not, I'm not, I'm not against what you're saying. Yeah, but you don't Honestly, know what I'm saying. Honestly, he's at level one. I'm going to come in at level no, five no, in a but, minute. No, but so. what I'm saying, before on, you come in with your, your non- nonsense, yeah, what I'm saying is... Of course we would have taken it at the start of the season, but we're not at the start of the season. We've had points where we're eight points clear, 11 points, like, yes, with additional games or whatever, but we need to be focused on what we're doing. I don't want there to be a complacency that kicks in. Oh yeah, by the way, guys, it's all right because we'd have taken it at the start of the season. No, 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 no. It's not about that now. We have to look at the current situation where we're at and we need to show more energy. I'm not saying that our energy was completely flat against uh, Brentford. We did get robbed, by the way. We did get robbed. Wrong. Let's just put that in there. You, you saw that, right? Well, was that was you, that, you was that no, I don't. I don't. I never ever in my career complained about them kind of situations. You got ninety you minutes. Are, you got an hour and you a half. You are lying because I've seen you on the pitch, Search bro. It. You ain't happy if something no, doesn't go your way. Game, you're in front of yeah, the referees. Yeah, but I mean, after the what game, mean? if after the game, if I've got ninety minutes to do something about it. If I've got 90 minutes to, to put two, three goals past someone, my team, not me personally, because obviously I never did yeah, that. Yeah. But I, and I can't blame a ref on one. Like if, okay, you're Arsenal, yeah? You, you want to win the league. You, you're you trying to win the league. We're you should gonna, just we're, be we're dispatching. Gonna, we're gonna yeah, you're going to. But you need yeah. to dispatch these teams and not worry about a, a, and I hear a VAR that. I, look, decision. I hear that, but I'm saying we have the right to not be upset because you got to remember, you've got to look at it in perspective, right? We haven't won the league in a few years. 
Okay. 19. So for us to it's potentially potentially not win it because of a decision like that, but that hurts, bro. Oh, yeah, you? buddy, but you still you got see what I'm saying? But it's not, his, it's not their fault, though. How old are you? It's Who's fault is it? The, over the course Who's of the whole season. So you're saying if Have it comes down to that one decision, you're going to blame VAR for Arsenal not winning the title. Have you been watching the Premier League in the last few years between Man City and Liverpool? Jesus. Have you seen, you you seen it, right? Have you, so you, you had seen? all them games, and if you, even you in seen? that one game, you had the whole 90 minutes, yeah, and you're going to blame that one decision. Ash, I'm asking you, when you've seen Liverpool lose the title, sometimes by how many points did they lose the title by? But that's their fault, though. I'm asking you, how many points? But whatever it is, it's their you fault. You know it's one point. No, but you just don't want to say but it. But it's their fault. They're, they could have done something about it. The ref, the, the ref don't score or defend goals for them. And the ref can sometimes... You know, sometimes, but uh, don't leave it to the ref. If you're playing Brentford, don't leave it to the. What to do you the mean, Brentford? Man. You can't you, get to as anyone, a Brentford or some anyone, any team. This anyone, is the Premier League. Anyone, if you're um, meant to be Arsenal, it's, win not, the it's league, not like when you were playing no, and there were listen, teams were like that. Listen, like, you know you're mean? meant to be Arsenal that are winning the league. Well, so we're, we're trying. About we're it. trying, but uh, look, so, but we got a big game on Wednesday. We got a big game on Wednesday, and we have to show up. The players owe us, and I'm not completely putting it all the way down to the referee, but a lot of it was because if Ivan Tony flipping doesn't doesn't score yeah then we get the three points and we're laughing on another day he scores three because he was mint and you now he was wicked garbage. I'll take him oh here's a question here's a question Harry Kane at the end of the season for Man United or Ivan Tony would you like to make go first for me something? whoever uh, I, I honestly I don't think he's a better player but I'd take Tony I don't think that he's a better player than Harry Kane but it takes a certain system, I think, for, to get the best out of Harry. I don't think Harry Kane can go and play in any team. Really? And, and, yeah, and do what he does, yeah. I don't think that he's as mobile as he once was. I think he's, he's good. He's as good as... He's good. He's going to score goals. But I, if I'm signing someone, I take Tony. Bruv, come on, man. Serious. I, I like Ivan Tony. I think he's class. Serious. I would take him any day at Arsenal. I reckon Chelsea should get smart and buy him. But I reckon... Oh, because they're not bought enough. No. Um, I reckon... I'd Harry take Kane. Ivan Tony because I wow. think you're getting more longevity out of Ivan Tony than you're going to get out of Harry Kane. Which is fair. You buy Harry Kane, you're going to have to replace him in two or three years maximum. Three. Um, maybe four because he's a natural may, goal scorer. Yeah, maybe, but you don't know. Now, I think there's a perception that Harry's an injured player. It's actually not the case. He's, he's been pretty injury-free for a while. And I think his style of play, when you look at how he, he plays with Son, would almost be a carbon copy of exactly how he would play with Rashford. So I think it would work. I just think preference. I want a player that's a little bit more combative. I mean, Tony's ruthless. I, I want someone that's got a little bit more about him. And Harry Kane comes across as a bit wet to me. In what way? Big goal scorer. <laughs> right, Steve's just cancelling our guests. Cancelling, yep. cancelling. A little bit wet. Oh, man. But yeah, I, I, for me, that's interesting. I, no, speaking of wet, I, I still say, in, sorry, I I still I've say got Harry to, Kane. Because I've got to chip in on that comment. He's not wet when you play against him. Go on, give us insight, please. It's, it's, he's tough. He's all elbows and knees Is and everything. It? Oh, okay. Yeah, he's not. Well, I know I'll he, give he, you he the... likes that little back and into nah, foul, he's, he? Yeah, he's, he's physical. He's physical. That's why I just had to just stop really? you because he isn't wet. I don't want the people thinking that he's wet to play against. He's, yeah. It's it's a physical battle against Kane. And that, what, Speaking of wet, though, let's talk about. Uh, I think the, the correct quote was the best 21 year old centre back to play in the Premier League. Was that right? Was that what it was? Speaking of wet, why did you start it off like that? Come on, man. Get to it, please. Start the season. He's like, Saliba's had like four good games. So he's out here proclaiming him to be the best 21-year-old centre-half that's ever played in the Premier League. Did I say uh, that? How old are you, by the way? Did I say that? How old are you, by the way? It's 35. Did I say that? Yes, you did. What did I say? Yeah, you did. What did I say? Let's be specific. Ask the people in the comments. Let us know. What did I actually say? That was what he said, wasn't it? What did I say? He said better than Rio. At the age of what? At 21. 21. That's a fair statement. I mean, it is if it's not. No, it, no, honestly, it's a fair statement. If you want to be wrong, it is, yeah. Anyway, oh. so how did um, the better 21-year-old than Rio do this weekend? Oh, I'm just putting it out there for you because I know you want to read it. So but, I, um, I reckon. Is it? Yeah. So I, I knew it anyway. Um, <laughs> Ivan Tony <laughs> took him home and he's back. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Wait, what are you laughing at? Put the stat, put the uh, stat on screen for everyone to see, please. Do you know what? On the five account. Is he too tall to play in the Premier League at centre-half? <sighs> Stop being silly. <laughs> Stop being silly. <laughs> Stop being silly. He didn't have a good game. Read out the stats so we can move on. So in case you wasn't aware what happened, a centre-half <laughs> had 10 attempts at winning an header on a football pitch. Was he playing the Harlem Globetrotters, Steve? Nope. Ivan Tony. And uh, 
the best 21 year old better than Rio won none yeah but I'm what sure you mean, but? I'm, sure, I'm sure Rio had he won days, none so I'm sure flawlessly yeah, shit if you if you play if you played <laughs> if you played and had a game like that yeah. have you had a game like that before? Oh, I'm like? sure I've had many a games like that yeah how's it feel none out of ten there's no way you've I, not I, I don't know. Out. I don't know. But I've had off days. None out of ten's a bit extreme. It, but <laughs> but you know what the thing is when you when when you see a player like Tony in the Premier League, he's because he's come up through all the leagues. That's so regular. That's every week, League Two, League One, mm. Championship. That's so regular. Mm. And sometimes they work in the Prem because the, the defenders aren't. You're just not used to it. You're playing against players that don't do that, wrapping you up. Do you know what I mean? Being horrible and giving you the little early nudge and all that. So you're not used to it. So sometimes. I think the centre halves, especially when they come from abroad, where that doesn't happen as much, they sometimes get found out a little bit against someone like that. I haven't told he was eating good playing against. Yeah, but, but we've both said that he's a player capable of playing at the highest level. Mm. So I don't know why you're acting as if. Yeah, not Saliba though. Mm, no, it doesn't take away what Saliba's done this season. I admit, since he's come back from the World Cup, it hasn't been the Saliba that we saw prior. And, you know, we've been saying it. Our own fan base has been saying he can do better. I feel like Gabriel's really been keeping it, keeping us in it and he needs to raise his levels. But I'm not worried because Wednesday's coming up. It's like a cup final. What makes you think you're not going to get absolutely smash on Wednesday? Nah, not at the Emirates, bro. Like, I think we've been really good against the big teams at home. And I reckon what Ash was saying is you're going to need someone to galvanise the team. And I feel like we've got enough team spirit to do that. I really do. I, I don't think it's as bad as people are making it out to be like, oh, the wheels are falling off. Yes, it's a blip. Yes, I'm not happy. But my nerves come from the fact that we haven't won it in a few years. So 19. So for me, it's that's where it comes from, basically. But Which is understandable, right? Right. No, I, but City, man. I thought they were going to just crumble because last few weeks, Peppers looked like the most stressed man in the world. They came out with the full anger of being found out. Against Villa. Yeah, and just hit them with a with a pace. If they come out and hit that with you lot on Wednesday, you might as well go home at lunchtime because you ain't getting back into that with them. But see, who's to say that we're not going to come out the same way we did against Man United? Or Brentford. Do you know what I mean? No, I think how you came out against us. You mean when, yeah. when we scored first? No, it don't, but it don't matter. We started better than you. We actually started. Yeah, better but than you're league. talking about a Manchester United team that is in in its first six months of rebuild, not a Manchester no, City we, team. No, we, we, we haven't said so. Pep. So what? Even when we played against them in the FA Cup at their ground, no, we showed a good scoring. we showed a good if account of themselves. Listen, man, yeah. I, I'm not. I, I, generally think, I generally think we win that game on Wednesday. We're going to be there anyway. Send, no, me that, we are. send me that clip, please. Yeah, please clip it up. I'm happy. I'm happy to put that down. We're winning that game. Talking about City, they played Villa, three-one, decent performance. Uh, it was a very good performance. First good half performance. was an unbelievable performance. Yeah. I actually Rodri. expected so much more from uh, Emery's team. I really did. No, I don't think it was down to them. I just think it was down to yeah. City. City, City, City at optimal. Pep vexed in the week. I didn't the, think he had it in him to do that like siege mentality thing. But that's 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 exactly what it looked like, wasn't it? And yeah. then they they came it, it, like I've played against the city teams like that. Mm. You don't matter. You can't pin nothing really on Villa there. They're just they're just holding on for dear life. Do you know what I mean? Because City were just so so dominant. Like what when they, the way they slick, they're moving the ball slick, and then you win it back, and the next thing, boom, they've just won it back off you. What, what can you like do? Hanging on, looking at the clock, thinking, please, like ref. Speed this clock up because we can't do nothing. So if that if he can keep that going, Pep, di, you know what I mean. If they can keep that momentum, if it, yeah, if it is it is an if this season. Yeah. Normally you'd say exactly. I mean, with all the issues, there's going to be twists and turns. I mean, Rodri showing why he's a better DM than Casemiro. I mean, I thought he was absolutely fantastic. Didn't you see it? Just those one twos. On this show, those one twos he was felt. Oh, even though he was fighting for the pen, I knew he had arrived. Yeah, Move mad, over, Cass. Mad, but they, they all look vexed. Like, There's like a new pep, top man. Do you know what I mean? They all was like, all the City players look like they just come, they just was all about nah, their they business. Were. They, they were. was all about their business from the minute. And then what they did, which I actually thought is, is quite, shows their experiences, I feel like they just cruised. They just put it, they just knocked into cruise control and then they saved themselves for the for the game coming up against Arsenal. And that's where you get their experience. Did you have beef with Maris? No, I've been married. Me and Mars are good. You're man. not on a BBC right now. Did you have beef with Mars? No, we're good. We're good. Did you have beef with Mars? Give I'm us saying, some context. Have you got beef, beef with context. everyone? We don't have beef. No, me and Mars don't have beef. No, did you have beef with yeah, Mars? Yeah, I had Why? beef. Why? Uh, 
I don't actually do, honest answer I don't know why, it's, why <laughs> all right it's we're back died. on the BBC do I one. don't know what do you want me to do tell a lie do you want me to tell a lie? How don't you know why you had beef with him? It's just one of them things where it was like, I don't know, we started on the pitch, we had beef. You're uh, taking the piss out of you going vegan? No, <laughs> he didn't take the piss out of me going vegan. <laughs> um, what, uh, do you have beef with people now or do you have tofu with people now? <laughs> it's just silly, it's getting silly. No, I don't <laughs> have beef with Mara's. Well, I've seen him since, answer, it's cool. Yeah. So can you tell us how good is he? Because for me, as much as I like, Sing praises about Saka. For me, there's no better guy in his position right now in the league. That's better. Like honestly, uh, he is the best. Yeah, no, nah, he's he's, he's, got he, he's one of the best. Him. But remember, that, remember that season he had when I had the beef with him when Le- when Leicester won the league. Yeah, that Incredible. he was actually it was almost impossible. Like and I mean genuinely, I don't I didn't see a fullback that season that could stop him because he's just he reminds me of like when I played against Ayan Robin. So in terms of you know what he's gonna do. You can't do it. So you know, the ball goes out to him. You Super get out 10. to him. It's like I know what you're gonna do, but you can't <laughs> stop it. But the the, the the funny thing about him is how you don't start every week. I don't understand. Do you know what I mean, Mara's? It's like. But Pep's got players like that. My man starting Bernardo Silva left back got him doing an absolute madness. Like it's just Pep in it. It's the genius in him. Anyway, Chelsea. They spent all that money, and it looks like they can't buy a win. Two wins in 13 Premier League games. Ooh, hardly scoring goals as I well, I tried by the way. to help you out and say, let's push this to the end of the season before you have to buy Rio his laptop. Because Potter, I think, has got to get a bullet. Can we let go of this laptop thing? Like, well, there's been many a bets. There's been either. many bets that we haven't actually followed it's through not with. not me. You need to we don't, we don't, we What's don't need to... What's the laptop bet? So I'm filming so quick. He, him and Rio, he goes, Potter's going to get the sack before the end of January. They just spent, what, about four billion in January. He's like, I'm going, should we, should we say end of the season? And he's like, no, January. February 1st, he's gone. Mark my words. And then somehow they ended up having a bet on a laptop. I'll try to make it 20 quid, right? And he's like, I'll buy you a laptop. <laughs> no, Rio said, i got to get him a laptop. And somehow we, i got to get my man yeah, a new laptop. Okay. It was all so, agreed yeah. on camera. Notarized so, yeah. and everything. Well, we'll see what happens. If, if I'm in a good mood, I'll bring him one next week. We'll see. <laughs> But anyway, uh, Enzo got a great assist. He's a he's a real player. He's a baller. But he is. I don't know how Chelsea are going to turn this around at the minute because, I mean, they could easily finish tenth. Now nah, this season's done. This yeah, season's done. Forget yeah, this yeah. season. But this is Chelsea though. They can do that. Remember after Jose won the following season, they went down. Like they they they're all right with that. They've got enough players and enough players with great potential give it a year or two they'll be challenging yeah but they've just bought 48 players yeah but that's Chelsea and if then they have to register manage, them all if anyone can manage that it's Chelsea yeah, I, just, oh. I agree I don't Chelsea don't Chelsea don't have there's not as much pressure even even now I don't think you don't hear that much if that was like you know like Arsenal for example or United you're gonna be so much or United so much chat about them Chelsea weirdly kind of accept where they are in the, in the league table and they're like, okay, we'll just go again there next season. But as a player there, surely the 900 players that have got registered at the club at the moment, aren't, some of them aren't going to get registered next season and they're going to have to have a fire sale to get rid of them. I mean, yeah, no, half the team's on loan at Nice in it. It's going to be mad. And also, when I was thinking, it might, you know, so when you, it, throughout the week, yeah, the, the manager gives the team out on the set Friday, sometimes a Thursday, but you, some players know they're starting anyway. And then probably half the team don't know it can be between anyone. Then what happens is you go in the, into the meeting room before Friday morning training. The manager gives the team out, and then you go back into the dressing room, get your boots on, and you go out to train. So in that little five minutes, everyone's kick, kicking off that's not in the team. Do you know what I mean? There's a couple sulking, bitching. Yeah, whatever. The manager the, the saying whatever about the manager. Can you imagine their dressing? Them? Mad team. You, Mad team. Can you imagine how many people are like? The vibes. The human that they're not starting. About 44 the people. And they've yeah. probably got a right to start, most yeah. of them. They'd start anywhere else. It yeah. must be like for Grandpa, I don't know how he controls that. I don't know. I'm looking at Abamyang, who, fair enough, he hasn't really been banging goals, but he's not included in the Champions League team. Chelsea are barely scoring as it is. Is he turning Havert, up Havert, Well, probably has to be contractually, <laughs> innit? You know, Kai Havertz, all he's doing is hitting crossbars and flipping sky in it and that. I don't know. It's I don't a weird know. situation. This is like, Thiago Silva must be doing all sorts trying to put out fires in that dressing room to try yeah. and keep the harmony because he seems like that kind of captain. But there, it must be chaos in there. It must be so chaotic. And part of every like, night before a game, I must be thinking, well, what, what am I going to do? I've got all these players. Sometimes it's, it's more of a problem 
having all these players that you got to try and keep happy and try and fit them in where and at the minute it just it don't even look right they're getting a lightweight up front still after all that Matting. all the all that money spent and all these players come in I can't believe no one was like it don't make we no need sense. a striker do you yeah. want a forward yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. Make no <laughs> sense. 98 number 10 do you want a forward uh, have you been in a situation where you've been left out and you've uh, you know you've had yeah. I don't know you've knock on the door manager, yeah, yeah, the door, yeah. I've had stuff. a couple of situations where um and to be fair, to be honest, I was quite lucky or, you know, I stayed in the team for a long period until t- towards the end. But I had a couple of situations with Nathan Jones. Who, who, oh, right. he just lost his job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, he would. He said I was playing one time, you're going to play next week. You know, that old one, like, you're not playing this week, but you're playing next week. And I remember saying at the time, so if we win 5-0, like, am I still playing? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely done him. I don't understand. And that's the situation. That was the situation. We didn't win 5 0, but it was yeah. like something where we'd won or the defenders had done well. And then, so I'm not in the team the next week, so I just walked straight upstairs and I knock on the door. Did you deserve to be playing though, Ash? Or were well, you I, just. Or were you just I, I felt being... like. No, no, I felt like. The, I can't remember the game before, but I come out the team for. Some, for I, I felt like I should have played, which is fine. That's a discussion to have between the manager and the player. So you can. You know, normally you go and discuss that. I feel like I should be playing. He's going to explain to you why you're not playing. Okay, cool. Do you know what I mean? But when the manager says, but you're in next week, then I'm like, oh, well, hang on a minute. Be careful because I am going to come back next week if I'm not in the team. <laughs> so then so then that's when I, yeah, that's when I went back. And then it was like some kind of excuse or something. I don't know what he, what he, he made something up. Um, and then what, weirdly, then that happened with Nathan Jones. We playing Swansea. So I wanted to play anyway. It was Stoke v Swansea. And like a Tuesday night and a Monday morning, I weren't in the team. And then, um, so kind of like, and it didn't kick off, but it was like, we had words. And then in that training session, I can't remember who it was, maybe we were on Shawcross, someone got injured, so I had to go in anyway. So it was all pointless, that whole conversation anyway. So I did play, but yeah, there's, that's what happens. Like sometimes when they give the team out, and I just, going back to Chelsea, imagine looking around the dressing room, like who's not playing? Madness. But half a billion worth of players? It's l- Madness. Did you ever have well, um, a well, manager well, that didn't have control of the dressing room, but maybe a captain or someone did? Um, yeah, we had a guy called, uh, at Swansea, we had a guy called uh, Gu- Francesco Guidolin, Italian manager. He didn't know what was going on. He, like, he didn't know anything <laughs> about the Premier League, nothing. <laughs> he was an older guy, lovely man, but he didn't know the opposition. A little bit similar to like Michael Laudrup as well. And we had a great season with him. We won the League Cup. I think we got, we don't know where we finished, but we had a good season. And um, like Michael Laudrup would come to me and he'd be like, uh, for example, like, I don't know, someone's name. Uh, who is, uh, who is this player? And I'm like, oh no, he plays for Stoke. Like he's going to start at right back or do you know what I mean? Whatever. Like, wow. He didn't know it. He, but he didn't care so, about it. So he was that. doing his homework basically. Yeah, but you no, know, he didn't, he didn't <laughs> care about nothing like that. He just basically picked his team and we would roll out. Do you know what I mean? And you'd have to tell him. <laughs> but he didn't care about nothing. It, 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 weren't, it didn't bother him. So say if we was playing down in London, and I'd say to him, because oh, when we're in Europe, you play Thursday and Sunday, you know, like Europa League. So I'd say, well, we've got Norwich on Sunday, Gaffan. We're in Russia on Thursday. So what are we going to do, like, in three weeks' time? The lads are asking if, do you know what I mean? How are we going to... And he'd be like, uh, uh, what, what do you think is best? Yeah. I'm like... <laughs> Oh, I don't know. You, you sp- I thought you was going to tell us. He's like, no, you decide and tell them. So it's like... Wow, so you were, well, it's you, like were, you were managing. You were managing at one but, point. But in, uh, that, yes. In, uh, managing those aspects. Yeah, he yeah. picked the team. But like, I've had some managers that just didn't... They just didn't care, for one, about managing those little bits. And he concentrated on the football. And then I've had some managers where... Like like Guidolin, who just didn't know anything about the league or the players that he inherited. Or was he anything. a good coach though? He must have had some redeeming factor. Well, it, honestly, it was like um, it was like I don't. Know, it was like something out of the, like fifties or some the mad stretches, the Italian stretches and the warm ups. Lads, I can remember right being on a training pitch with Neil Taylor and being on the floor laughing hysterical because of the the mad stretches that they, we was doing these exercises and warm up yeah where we're just laughing. And he was such a nice guy that he'd be saying to us, oh, you always laugh, huh? You always laugh, at, you always laugh at me, huh? And we're like, can't talk. I got to, like, who's, no one don't bounce the groin down and these all these mad stretches and, yeah, yeah. and all this. Like, it was like old school something mad, but he was such a nice guy that he just used to knew we'd leave. He would do a stretch and, you know, like, he had this thing where he'd like, 
was to change. So like you do a yeah. sketch, you pull it off, like no one don't do that anymore. Do you know what I mean? Change so we start laughing, just being silly anyway. And he'd be like, hey, you always laugh at me. Hey, you always laugh. And I'm like, this guy that I have no control, but he was so nice. That we that you and listened, I was the captain. That you listened. We kind of we tried to. <laughs> end, so we, nice we, that you just, we tried to like pacify him and and do what he was asking you. Yeah. Oh, man, how did that make you feel though? Because obviously you've just you've described their styles, but like, are you going into work thinking, bro, this is? Well, as as, is, as captain, I had lo- it was different. Swansea's a small club, but as captain, I had loads more responsibility. Uh, in, with certain managers, like Brendan Rodgers would take care of everything. You mm-hmm. just got to play. But other managers, i.e. like Michael Laudrup and, and Guidelin and, and people, it was like you had to do a lot of, of the work yourself and make decisions because they didn't know or care to know about, you know, the, the kind of logistics of the way it worked or whatever. So I didn't mind it. I was captain, so I just kind of got on with it. Um, so Nathan Jones obviously just lost his job um, after a, a very poor run. Um, what was it like... As a manager, when you played under him, uh, do you know it, it didn't? It, it hasn't surprised me what's happened because he came from Luton where he did well. Um, I got the feeling that on the first day, the first I mean, we had a Stoke team in the Championship that on paper sh- should have walked it, but we weren't. We, we weren't. we weren't doing very well. But we had some Champions League winners in there: Bojan, Darren Fletcher. We got like low, X amount of Premier League appearances in there: Ryan Shaw, Cross, myself, Charlie Adam. You could go from top to bottom: Jack Butland and whatever. And I felt like when he come in, the first speech that he gave was along the lines of, uh, I can't tell you like how to, I'm not going to teach you like how to play. And we all come out of the meeting straight away going, that don't make sense. You know, like he already had an inferior attitude to what he was seeing in front of him instead of just taking control. Because all the lads were great lads at Stoke. But it, he straight away just come across as a little bit insecure. And now I'm f- looking at all these faces that I've seen in the Prem for so long. And it it was like one of the rants that he had, like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna bend to what you guys want, which we didn't want nothing. We just want you to just tell us what to do, and we'll get it done, or try our best to get it done. But it was like I can't tell you what to how to play because you you know you're all good players. Don't you think he was trying to be respectful though? Like, no, you, not really. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying it was right. No, I don't. But I, I don't I, maybe, I, but it, but it, who cares? Yeah. It, do you know what I mean? It's a situation where you got you got Ron Shawcross centre back and me centre back. Now I play. I grew up. My whole Swansea career completely opposite to him. No one's right or wrong. They played long ball. We played passing game. We're both good friends. Tell us which one of the what are we doing? Do you know what I mean? That's all we wanted to know if Nathan Jones was what are we doing? And it would be something different all the time and he never really wanted to tell anyone anything. It was like he, he, was he shook. So a not, little de- bit. not decisive, didn't have his own sort of philosophy. Well, but then he goes to back to Luton and, and, and then he has his own philosophy, which is like a four diamond two. So he kept saying, you know, at Luton we played a four diamond two. It's like, well, do it then. Like, make it happen here. Or don't, well, you keep talking about mm. what you did at Luton. It don't make no sense. Either do it or st- show up about Luton because we don't care. Like, what are we doing? Do you know what I mean? And then, he, then what would happen is we'd play another formation and then he'd say, I've compromised what, what I know. So the lads are like, well do, you, well, do you then? Do you put us in a four, two, three, one or whatever? Do you know what I mean? So... It doesn't surprise when he went into Southampton. I just thought, well, he's gone back to Luton. We'll see if he learnt from the Stoke thing. And I think he referenced it in one of his early interviews about that he's learnt from that situation. Clearly, he hasn't because he come out with a, with the two mad rants that everyone was like, "Well, you're just unfolding on TV," <laughs> and then ends up not doing nothing and gets the sack. So I'm like, well, clearly nothing was learnt there then. So your relationship weren't exactly uh, roses. No, it was sweet. It was it was good. I'm just telling you like it was. I didn't have a problem with him. As a man, mm. it was fine. Like you, you clash with managers all the time, and you can get past it. And yeah. No, we didn't clash. It was more like in terms of why am I playing? Well, because of this or that. Fine. Well, we go out. You still give your best in training. If you're called upon the next day, you do it. But it didn't surprise me what's happened at Southampton, unless he'd alert from it. Because I was looking at it like maybe he's going to take control of this Southampton team, play how he wants them to play, which we all know is Luton. He's had good success at Luton. I don't know if they're the best team in Europe or whatever it was that he claimed, but they've been decent. He's done well with them. Hang on, what? That's what he claimed, wasn't it? Do you not see that one? No. No. They don't know when we got that. Nah, he, yeah. said, <laughs> he said Luton, got that. when he was at Luton, was the best team in Europe. Let's add that quote in there, please. Paraphrase, but it was along those lines. So yeah. anyway, so we've done well there, but then I was saying, okay, let's see now, because I worked underneath you at Stoke and you didn't take control. 
And I feel like you felt like you couldn't tell players that have achieved things what to do and what not to do, when in reality, all the player wants to know is what do I do? Tell me what to do and I'll go and do it majority of the time. Well, surely that decisiveness is, is whether you know you're right or wrong on a the pitch then. Because if you're being, like you've got players that have had a million different philosophies and especially when you're getting players in the 30s, you've had seven, eight different coaches, all have their different input on them. Do you as a player just want, I want you to do this and don't deviate? Yeah. So, so for example, Sam Allardyce, like going back to what we're talking about, he, did, he, compl- he played a completely different style that I've never played before. Never, Long ball. but I don't. I didn't question it because he made it clear. This is what we're gonna do every day in training and every game, like it or lump it. So okay, I'm gonna. I gotta get down to and try and play how he wants me to play. No matter what I think, I I didn't like it. Was stinking out the place. I thought, but I've got to do it to get into his team. And he said, this is what's gonna happen. You can't please all the people. And I, and I appreciate that as a player to say someone to come in and go. We're gonna play like this. If you don't like it, you can always leave when a transfer window comes around. But mm-hmm. I'm in control. This is what we're doing. If you're getting to my team, you're going to do this. Okay, cool. I'll try my best to do what you've asked me to do. Guys, um, we could go on for ages, but I think we've had a fantastic vibe with five. Ash, don't don't try to not come on again, bro. You need to be coming on more I won't frequently. I come on after this Arsenal no, Man City game, man. Do it. Why? Ah, like, just, wh- no, why? But just to see. Just why? to see the vibes. Just okay, to see. Because you okay. might be happy. You might yeah, be a bit yeah, happier yeah. than today. I don't know. 100% going to be happy. I've got to wrap up the no other cake. games very quickly. Uh, Fulham during tour with oh, Nottingham you get Forest. You're getting a DM. You're getting a DM. <laughs> you're getting a DM. You can't uh, just. Oh. Leicester, Leicester for Leicester smashing Tottenham. By the way, hey, four one. Spurs are trying to make that top five race interesting, aren't they? That's mad. I don't Real get it. Team Spurs called it already. It's bizarre. You can't you can't nail it down? Sometimes it look like world beaters, and then why are sometimes... we not blaming Conte? I love Conte personally, yeah, but why are we not blaming him? It seems to me like he gets. Oh, look at this now. No, I like Conte. <laughs> I do like content. <laughs> yeah, I, right. I do. Oh, what? Because you wanted him? Oh, because no, people him, were saying that you yeah. should go United and you were saying no. no. Yeah. Right, right, cool. Yeah. Well, clearly, it must be something else, isn't it? I don't know. It can't be him. Or is it him? I don't know. We'll see. Let us know what you think in the comments. Will it be there in September? Uh, Absolutely uh, prob- not. Probably not. Uh, Brighton won, Crystal Palace won, Southampton won, Wolves two, Bournemouth won, Newcastle won. That's a big result, that, by the way, for Bournemouth. Uh, and it helps us out as well. Up the top, and you and you guys. I know you guys think you're in the title race as well, man. Stop pretending, man. Why well, you look? Are you looking at Newcastle as a not as not a anymore? But you know, you gotta be Come aware. Come on, man. Look forward, on? man. We're, we're looking, looking at your shoulder forward. four, man. Because that's where they're going. <laughs> <laughs> on that note ladies and gentlemen VAR Lee Mason you guys you, oh, you guys are horrible man horrible we'll be back next week with more Vibe 5 Joel Bayer Stephen Housen Wales Swansea Everton and more Ashley Williams signing out peace